All right, everyone, we have fallout from the Ohio 12th special election time now. Uh, we've got to talk about the ramifications of that. And there's plenty of insults really to go around because the first group that I see reacting to this and they're like saying off the wall shit is actually the Republicans because they managed to win a victory by, you know, a little bit less than a point in an area that they did carry by double digits the last time around. While this is technically a victory, and even uh, some of the Democrats are getting it wrong, it's a special election, which means the Republican uh, turnout doesn't get quite the boost it generally gets during a midterm. So I think they probably win it again in November, because, of course, in three months they have to do this all over again. I don't see th that big a threat. I think t differential turnout will be heavily on the GOP side, especially in the Rust Belt. So the Republicans are breathing a sigh of relief. But to celebrate the fact that, hey, we won by the skin of our teeth, why? Uh, wouldn't this be a, an indicator that you need to work harder? And then some of the Republicans are also being dumb because they're like saying, well, if it weren't for Trump being so unpopular and unlikable, we would have been doing fine here. No, Trump saved your ass in this election by showing up and campaigning there in the 11th hour. He shows up, hell, holds a massive rally. Do you think that that may have energized that extra 1,500 people that you won by to vote? I think it did. I think it won you the election there. You should be kissing Trump's toes right now, not playing never Trumper and saying, well, if only we had a principled neoconservative who would lower taxes by half a percent for corporations and start a war, then we would have won by double digits in Ohio. I don't think you understand political strategy. Then we turn to the Democratic side. Now, on the Democratic side, uh, at first, uh, they were predicting they would have a, basically uh, a massive surge of voters and they would win by a huge margin. They were hoping to crush the Republicans. They, they prefaced, they, they jumped the gun too quickly because in all of their forays into talking about the race like the day before and even the day of until the voting actually was in, they made out as though they expected to win by five to ten points, wipe the floor with the Republican Party. They would number one win, number two win by a significant margin, and this was an indicator there'd be a blue wave. None of them said, hey, if we come close, there will be a blue wave. So, so they sort of hanged their own argument when you really think about it. Then they immediately began looking for scapegoats. Instead of blaming the Democratic Party for continuously nominating boring, aged, shitty candidates, who did they blame? Predictably, Russia and the Green Party. The Russia and third parties seem to be the two uh, groups that the Democrats have fixated on. I don't know how wise a strategy it is to alienate green voters when you're going to literally need some of those green voters, what was it, a million and a half, two million people decided to vote for the green, for the, I mean, uh, for the libertarians and then like half a million for the Green Party in 2016. It was a large number of people, one of the largest vote shares for third party showing up in U.S. electoral history, actually, in the last, like, century. One of the largest showing, certainly, I think, the largest showing for the Libertarians and the Greens both, and combined between the two of them, averaging 15, sometimes 20% in certain states. That's a lot of voters, and you have just blamed them for your problems. The thing is, in the internet era, it's becoming more and more difficult for an unprincipled group like the DNC to be able with a straight face to say, hey, other parties existing is why we're losing and this is a problem. I think the natural counter to that is if you were principled, you wouldn't have this issue because these people would vote for you. Since you are not, since you keep fielding geriatric millionaires who have center-left corporate platforms, why would someone who's actually on the left, like a Green Party member, even entertain the thought of voting for you? To them, you're not really different from a Republican anyway. Some of the Republicans are oddly more left-leaning than some of you sometimes. So that's what I would say about that. And then to blame Russia, well, uh, Alyssa Milano comes out. She's like, well, I think that these Green Party voters are Russian agents. So, so in other words, you are extending the Red Scare bullshit. Uh, and you actually believe that some thousands of Ohioans are working for the Kremlin. So Trump is a Russian. Uh, the GOP is run by the Russians. Now the Green Party, too, is run by Russians. There are literally more than half the population, I guess, is Russian. Wow, you know, you could have fooled me. I didn't know that I was uh, reading Krillic right now, but I guess uh, I was totally wrong. Uh, the KGB won, the, you know, the Cold War is over. We lost, and no shots were even fired.
Amazing how a party that has traditionally stood for raising taxes, disarming people, and globalizing the world and becoming just one of a number of powers, you're the ones standing against evil Russia. But the party that right now is led by a dude who says, no, we want to be the greatest in the world, grow our economy more rapidly, and if we do get fucked, I want everyone to have machine guns, that's a pro-Russian platform. You're not making any sense. It's just like with the censorship bullshit. Oh, Russia. Russia this, Russia that, so we need to censor a bunch of people who have nothing to do with Russia. Based just on a whim. Based on a hunch. Based on some corporation says they might be compromised. It's bullshit and they know it. So the Democrats lost and the basic reaction is just sour grapes. It's the same whining we saw in 2016. The third parties did it. Russia did it. We ju they just can't understand the concept that especially younger voters don't feel energized by the Democratic Party. And then, by the way, the biggest loser of the night was Ocasio-Cortez. Believe it or not, it was actually the, the socialist, you know, the social democrat. No, the socialist, which is what her platform boils down to, uh, from the Democratic Party. That socialist firebrand endorsed a bunch of candidates within these races, all the so-called principled progressives, which is to say other socialists. They all lost. I think every single one of them actually got beaten by the establishmentarians. Now this, this is bigger news. This is what people should be talking about. I'd make a separate video on it if anyone gave a fuck, but obviously unless you're a core fan who watches everything I upload, you probably don't care about this. Normie America will be blissfully unawares of this. This is, ba this is a sign the Democratic Party's problems are going to get a lot worse before they get better, and I'll tell you why. The Democrats need to play at least somewhat nice with the progressives. But the Democrats just largely laid waste to the progressives and rejected their message. What's going to happen? Who are those progressives going to vote for? They're going to pull a Bernie Sanders probably in 2020, and they'll vote Green. Or they'll vote Libertarian, or maybe they'll punish the DNC by voting for Trump. It happened before. Some of those voters that uh, backed Trump, they were Democrats. Ultimately, they were Democrats tired of the way the DNC operates, hoping to score a victory by crushing it under their foot. They should, by the way, do it again. You'll end up with a party schism and the party will reform. I can guarantee that it will. After two successive losses to someone like Donald Trump, with the kind of platform he has, with the more and more obvious schismatic tendencies of the Democratic Party, you can force the party to reform, to jettison the dead weight, some of the older shitty candidates, and get new people in, you know, whether they're the left or business Dems, union Dems, whatever they happen to be, you can force that to happen. It just takes a concerted effort of maybe half a million people. Considering the population of this country and of the Democratic Party, not that hard to do. You should begin organizing now for a 2020 push against the DNC unless they nominate, you know, some arbitrarily fringe candidate. You watch, they're going to try to push off a middle ground centrist candidate on you. Someone that pays lip service to probably progressivism and or the working class while being a principled neoliberal. They'll be like a Bushite. They'll be like an Al Gore or something. You watch, the Democratic Party, there's a 99% chance they do that. I'd be very surprised if they didn't. This is one of the reasons I expect them to lose because I think that the effort will end up falling flat, even if it's Gillibrand or somebody like that. The Democrats need to get over whining about these things and realize that they need to simply look in the mirror. Instead of looking around and looking for someone to blame for every problem you have, look in the mirror. That's the person you need to be blaming. Now ask yourself, what can we do better? Maybe we should stop insulting people based on their race. Maybe we should stop uh, supporting the idea of robbing people of more of their money. Maybe we should stop warmongering all the time. We're beginning to sound a little bit like Republicans from the early 2000s. The, you know, every sane Democrat says, why would a Green Party member vote for you? The Republicans, oddly enough, are closer to maybe 2000s liberalism now than you are. That's about all. Peace out.